Hey guys, welcome to another video here in the channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to have a fun time continuing with our little uh, project, the cute creature. It's uh, the end of the week for me and uh, I want to use uh, this, uh, I want to do this thing called a palette cleanser. So I just want to rest a little bit during the weekend and I want to finish uh, with this very nice uh, horn creation. I'm going to show you how we can do some cool horns for the character. So this is the combined character here inside of Maya. This is the one that I use for the renders that you see on the thumbnails. And um, even though we could create the uh, horns inside of Seabrush, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that it's perfectly fine if you want to do them here inside of Maya. Like there's absolutely no problem whatsoever. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go and use my create curve tools and I'm going to use the EP curve to trace the direction that I want my horns to be going towards, which is something like that. Okay. Now we can bring this forward so we can see it closer to the face and we're going to be using the sweep mesh tool. Now, why the sweep mesh tool? Well, because we can lower this thing quite a bit and it has a taper function that I really, really like. I think it's really helpful to be able to taper this. We can change the precision mode, which is how many, like how precise we're going to go. I want to go a little bit low poly, kind of like a little bit jaggedy like this. You can see that nice like a cut right there. And very importantly, we can change the sides. So I can go here and say I want only four sides to the horn, for instance. Or maybe we want six sides. I'm going to go six sides and I'll explain what I'm going to do in just a second. So yeah, that's it. Like, See how easy it is to do that. You can optimize this or you can increase the precision a little bit more, something like a 98. It's going to give you a couple more divisions on the horn. Uh, but this is a perfectly valid way to create a, a horn, like the, the beginnings of the horns like this. Now, once we have this, one of the cool things that I like about the sweep mesh tool is the fact that the curve still has information, right? So what this means is if you move the curve along, I can still change the shape of the horn. So if I want to make this thing a little bit straighter or a little bit rounder, like I can change the position of the curve and it's going to give me a slightly different effect. I can also like maybe make it a little bit more pointy towards the end like that. There you go. That looks uh, that looks interesting. It looks I, I like how it looks. It looks fine. So uh, I'm just going to say delete history. Very important. So now the curve is no longer affecting the horn and uh, we can continue to build more stuff. So what I want to do with this horn is I actually want to make it a little bit uh, more uh, a little bit sharper. So I'm going to delete at this edge right here and this edge right here. Now, the reason why I want to do this, see how that becomes like a triangular looking uh, horn, is because I want to have a little bit of uh, contrast in the shapes of my character. I want the character to be uh, soft on the on the body, on the fur, and then really hard surfacey on the on the horns. And this is going to help me with that. Now, uh, I just want to remind you guys that we have uh, the promotion going on. If you want to learn about tricks like this one or some of the other ones that I'm going to be showing in more advanced uh, texturing stuff, you can check our advanced uh, texturing character course right here. Hey guys, I'm really happy to announce that we have finished the newest course, Advanced Texturing for Character Creation. This is the continuation of our previous course where we created a high poly character. And in this one, I'm going to teach you how to texture, retopologize, bake, and get your character all the way to Unreal Engine. Now, for the next five days, you're going to be able to get this specific course for 90% off in Udemy. You can get the link down here in the description and you're going to get 90% off. This is the lowest we can go for the course. And if you just finished the previous one, this is a perfect way to continue your 3D journey. In this course, I'm going to teach you pretty much all of the techniques that I've learned in the past 12 years. All of the little tips, tricks and techniques are going to be there and you're going to be able to create this amazing result that you're seeing. So. If you want to check it out, make sure to use the code that you're going to find down here in the description. And remember, we only have five days for this discount. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. If you want to learn how to be an amazing 3D artist, this is the video for you. There you go. So if you're watching the video on January 28th, it's probably the second to last day. So make sure to use the code real quick. Now, uh, now that we have this, I'm going to go back to the front view and we need to build the remaining like little things right here. So the like secondary horns. So I'm going to draw another curve here with create curve tools, EP curve. That's going to be my second curve. And we're going to do the exact same thing. But actually, I'm going to delete that and redo it because I want to start on the base so that the taper goes uh, up. We do sweep mesh. We reduce the scale quite a bit. We increase the taper. And we increase the precision. 
we lower the sides to six and that's it you can move this thing forward and there we go now i definitely don't want this to be as sharp so i'm gonna delete some of these faces i am gonna of course uh freeze transformation and delete history and we do want to have the sort of like triangular look so we're gonna delete uh, those guys right there and that's it with that done we've uh we're pretty much uh created a very basic shape here for the horn i'm gonna go uh, object mode and just get this in there of course we're gonna do sculpting right but we have the basic shapes of the horns done here now to help me with the sculpting side of things i'm gonna go to the edges right here all of this ones especially this guy right here and we're gonna bevel them why because if i were to uh, say smooth as you can see right there we're gonna get a really really smooth effect and even though i do like it i do want to have a couple of extra edge loops to make it a little bit easier and a little bit nicer i, I kind of want to even go like here and i really like that sort of like jaggedy change in direction so i'm gonna add there and there and over here like this angle right here i want to make it sharper as well mainly for silhouette purposes. There we go. See how nice that looks? Makes it look really, really, really interesting. Uh, this one, do the same thing. I'm gonna grab the outer edges or the border edges. And we're gonna bevel them. And there we go. I'm tempted to, yeah, that's fine. I think that's fine. So grab both of them, file, export selection, we're gonna go to our assets on our folder, which is 2023 assets. And the uh, reindeer, call this horns. Then we go back to ZBrush. ZBrush. Oh, is it stuck? Mm, give me one second. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna say append and we're gonna append a sphere and then select the sphere and we're gonna go to import and we're gonna import the horns, just like that. Hit okay. And there we go. Now for some reason it imported it was a different subtool. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go here, merge, merge visible. So there is a single subtool, go back here, let's, delete this sphere we don't need it anymore and we can append the merge effect right there it should not have changed the scale but it might have changed the position as you can see right there so let's ascend to the pivot point and get this guys into position so right around there perfect of course we're gonna rotate them uh back a little bit just to get a better like flow overall uh we might play around with the scales as well if we want to make him like really really big horns i think that looks quite nice and that uh, we need to delete the other one so let's go to this guy real quick i'm gonna use my select lasso so control shift and i'm gonna hide the horns as best as i can and say delete hidden with uh, this custom interface. By the way, guys, let me know if you want me to do a video about uh, custom interfaces. I haven't really done one in a while. And some people have asked me, hey, what about this like custom interface? It's just a couple of like basic stuff, to be honest, like nothing, nothing super important, uh, but it helps. There we go. So now we can grab this guys right here and go C plugin. Subtool master and mirror. And look at that. We've got some very, very cool looking horns. I'm gonna move the basics here or the base here, turn on symmetry, and we can play around with certain things like the inclination of the horns. Maybe they're gonna be a little bit lower, a little bit higher. Kind of want them to go a little bit higher like this. It kind of look cool. Probably rotate them back as well. Maybe make them a little bit smaller push them in and there we go so now uh we're gonna subdivide this a couple of times and we're gonna dynamish when we dynamish we're not gonna freeze the subdivisions and we definitely need to have way higher subdivision levels on the dynamish so when we subdivide we don't lose all of the detail and now comes the part of uh, sculpting 
we can start sculpting and generating a basic blocking here for the for the horn. So horns, in my experience, they kind of work like branches on a tree. So we can create like a like a sort of knot that blends this in, like this, right? So that it looks like it's coming out or or protruding out of the main horn. And then I also want to add like some stuff here. I like the horns where when they have like this like lines going around. I've always find found those lines to be quite interesting. And I kind of like the the juxtaposition. I think that's the proper word of having this like really cute character with horns that look a little bit more evilish or more edgy, right? So so I think that that gives us an interesting Again, like an interesting shape of language overall. Now here, the trick is to, to blocking. This is a blocking still. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish the detailing today, but I'm going to be adding volume to this things, to this border, so that we separate like the segments of the horn. But see how nice and sharp the, the lines are right there? And then with Trim Dynamic, we can flatten this out and create a sort of ramp. And that's again gonna uh, help me get a more interesting silhouette and a slightly different sign. Of course, on the head, we need to play around with the insertion of the, of the horns because horns are usually attached to a bone or a part of the bone. So we need to play around with that for it to make sense. But yeah, this is looking, I, can't, I really like how this is coming along. I'm gonna start moving these things and let's finish sketching the, the general line. So for instance, there's definitely gonna be a line there. There's probably gonna be a line here and then another line here, here, here. And then fewer lines as we get, or actually a little bit more like like more lines as we go further, further up. But yeah, not bad. I think we're in a really good position. As I mentioned in the last video, if you're uh, going to participate, if you want to participate in the contest, making sure that you finish your high poly by the end of um, of uh, of January or maybe by the end of next week should be more than enough. Like if you leave. Uh, your your stuff for the end of next week, and then you do one week for retopology, one week for textures, and one week for rendering, you're going to be just fine for the end of uh, February, which is the due date of this uh, character right here. Now, if you're seeing this and you're like, I don't really know how to learn how to do this, remember, we have the Skillshare promotion as well. I'm not going to play it right now, but uh, you can check the links down here, and uh, we also are offering some free trial for uh, ZBrush and for Maya and for all of the softwares with a Skillshare uh, subscription. The link is down here. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is just a quick trick that I want to show you how to bring an asset from Maya into ZBrush and start using it to create something that looks a lot cleaner. So I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. I'm going to do a quick render to upload on the thumbnail, and I'm going to get some rest because this week was crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to get some rest this weekend, and I'll see you back on Monday. Remember, Monday, 9 a.m. Mexico time, 8.30 and PM India time are going to be the main uh, like hours that you can look for, uh, depending on what part of the world you're at. And uh, I'll be happy to chat with you, exchange some stuff. We're probably going to be working on the environment. We've left that one um, alone for a quite for a little bit, so we're probably going to be working on that one. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye.